Representative Lillian Ortiz Self with the 21st District. How are you doing? Great, thank you. This is the first week of session. It is a short session and you have to pack a lot of things into eight weeks and you have a piece of very good news from a bill from last year. Yes, I was so excited that my secondary stress bill was heard on the House floor in the very first day of floor action. That was great because that bill is a carryover bill from last year that got stuck in the Senate and we wanted to get it out. The best part about that bill is that it came out with full bipartisan support with a House vote of 96 to 0. That was exciting because it sent a very strong message to all our educators that they matter and that we give credence to the fact that what they are facing every day on the front lines of our school building is acknowledged and we understand that they need help and support to deal with it. So the bill asked the Office of Superintendent of Public Instruction to develop a professional development module that addresses and helps teachers identify when their stress level becomes a barrier to their effectiveness in the classroom. It's basically a self-care module. How do you identify when everything you're hearing every day plus your own personal stress because we're human and we bring all of that into the classroom, when does that become so much that you need to stop and take care of yourself, really? And then helping them to identify where to go for resources. Okay. You know, I go into the classrooms and I've had to relieve teachers who break down and are crying because they've heard another story of a child who's losing their mother to cancer or um, found out that their child that they've been uh, so invested in in the classroom is living out of a car. All those things build up on a daily basis. This bill will hopefully help our teachers get some help. Congratulations and good luck for that bill. And I wanted to ask you about, you know, some of your priorities for this very short session. I have many. The needs of our families are many. However, I'd like to talk to you about two specific bills that are dear to me because I feel they give our families the access and voice that they deserve in two very important systems, and that's the Department of Health Services and our Office of Superintendent Public Instruction. Actually, the first bill deals with our children 0 to 21, and it develops a family engagement framework where we have to identify and include our parents in developing this framework so that they can actually have a voice and be part of the decision-making processes and services that we deliver as a state. We can no longer do this work in isolation, not that we have been doing it in total isolation, but for so long there are gaps, and there are gaps in which parents access and have voice to some of these services. I hope to be able to address that, some of that with this bill. The other one is in our Department of Children and Family Services, really looking at our foster children. And one of the things that is happening is that our biological parents, we know, want to reunify with their children. We know the children want to reunify with their biological parents. And we need to make sure that we empower our foster parents to have the resources and the assistance and access to each other so that they can help promote this reunification. So that's a foster resource parent bill, utilizing the expertise of our foster parents and engaging our biological parents, moving us towards a mentoring type of work so that our biological parents can reunify with their children faster. All right, well, thank you. Good luck on those, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you so much.